Hey fellow Vault Dwellers, it's Angry Tartul! And after my last video about soloing the Imposter with Stealth Build, I got a lot of questions how to solo the Colossus with Stealth Build. And I just realized I do not have up-to-date guide on my channel how to do that, therefore I'm doing it now. And here's my Stealth Build and we'll be going after the Colossus, after the Mr. L solo with this build. Let me start from some important tips and tricks about the build itself. You don't need to have exactly the same build, although it is helpful to have couple points included, like Ground Pounder and Tank Killer, Tenderizer to get your damage up, those are the most important. Uh, then of course a Sneak Perks to boost your damage and to remain hidden, as this will be important, that's a stealth build obviously, and under luck. It's very good if you can equip Tormentor. It's like a key perk in here, as we don't want Colossus to move around in the mine and you know what he can do if he moves around, he can glitch through the walls, then we don't want that, then we need to keep him nice and steady. And from the legendary perks, only one is important, max out follow through. Now about the weapon, my recommendation will be either Handmade or Fixer with Quad. If you can get it, do it. If you can go low health and you are not too afraid that you will die, do it because it gives you more damage and Colossus is a huge bullet sponge. Then damage, damage and damage. That, that's the focus here. About the armor, only one thing is worth to mention. If you can, install asbestos lining on the torso. That will protect you from a random death risk from those falling embers. It's 100% protection, then you want that. And of course you need to nuke Mononga Mine, but you already have it nuked, let's jump in. And now while we are waiting for the event to start, couple more important points. It's strongly recommended to be a herbivore for this type of event, as those are the best boosts for stealth character. And as you can see, I'm using some food buffs already. Company T, that's a huge one, strongly recommend you to use it, or if not available, any other AP regeneration boost. Then we have Mutrut T for more agility, Sweetwater Special Blend for more perception, Tattoo Juice for more AP, and very important, any type of food or drink that will boost your critical damage, there are multiple types for herbivores, like at this moment I'm using Mega Slow of Mushroom Zoop. Whatever buff, if you can get to your max HP, will be awesome. About the buffs that we'll use directly before the fight will start, Liquid Courage, recipe for that you can get from Daily Ops. Unfortunately, crafting requires ingredients that Colossus himself is dropping, then you need to kill him once to be able to craft one for the next fight, but incredibly helpful, and Psycho Buff, to increase our damage and survivability slightly in case we'll get detected and hit by something. Then that will help us survive. Oh, and I almost forgot, if you'll be lucky to get there at night, Mr. Sandman, equip that. And I'm ready to be behind the event already started. <laughs> we go and jump in like to over a 30 second delay. The turtle was not paying attention. And now we're taking Liquid Courage, Psycho Buff, and Psycho Buff actually boosts our health for a moment, then we eat whatever, and that put it back to, to correct state. And we are starting not from the head, but from his legs. We're taking one leg down, and then we're trying to take the other leg down, and now we are swapping for the head. That's what you do, just then pay attention whenever some Wendigos will start spawning as he will be summoning them and keep walking to the side as he will be shooting at you. Then walking to the side is again very helpful. The turtle, turtle dance, turtle shuffle is required to make it easier. Uh, I just got hit because I stopped for a moment. Then keep walking to the side and you can see my extra half buff actually saved me as I was hit and I survived and... Okay, I, now I died. He suddenly decided to run, I don't know what happened. He should be crippled, I think he cheated somehow. But no worries, we'll go back. 
And we are back. We'll take care of the Wendigos first. Unfortunately, most likely, Mr. Colossus will be reset at this point. And I think I forgot to equip Ganfu. That's important because otherwise you will be dropping out your vats. Then I can like probably play without sneak and keep Mr. Sandman and equip Ganfu as I'm bloody built. Low health, a lot of a lot of agility. There's the Ganfu. That will help a lot. We don't want to keep dropping vats. That's not helpful. Right. Where's Mr. Colossus? He's probably regenerated, but where is he? Oh, there is. He's hiding and we are restarting then. And hopefully this time his legs will not be cheating us. Yep. We have the leg. And whenever I'm reloading, I actually should exit VATS as I want my AP to regenerate. As you can see, I don't have any AP regenerating pieces on me. Then that's make it a little bit slower. The important part is keep walking to the sides. And when VATS is out, then reload. As, as you can see, this way you will be doing a lot of damage. Just practice it a little bit. The turtle shuffle, the turtle dance is always important for sneak builds. If you can hear Wendigo, change the target and try to hit them a little bit but keep moving as well as you can see he like to shoot he's not a very nice guy and he's suddenly walking again i think somehow if i don't pay enough attention he's regenerating half of his legs and he shouldn't be able to do that don't know today he's like i cannot cripple his leg again all right then Let's look that Mr. Air want to make it harder. In that case, we just need to rely on Turtle Dance and he regenerate. Maybe that will fix him. Let me see. Will that fix him? Can I cripple the leg again? Oh, maybe I can. I will disable him at least for at least for a moment. That's good. I don't know how he's doing that, that he's able to keep cheating me. But I can live with that. I can do it. As you can see, I'm getting crazy damage then. And I'm walking straight under those ambers. That's thanks to this mod that I'm using. And he's shooting always in the wrong place because I'm doing the turtle dance. I'm walking to the side and he cannot figure out what I'm actually doing. And that's the important part. And I'm absolutely safe. And now I see some Wendigos. Then we'll clear them. And you can see that he's following you. When you stop, at least even for a moment, he will get angry and he will try to follow you. Then you need to keep moving. Wendigos are not as big of a threat, but still you need to keep an eye on them. And keep moving. Left, right. As you can see, he's here. Pay attention to your rats. As I'm not. And now I'm quite low. I will just use a rat away. Uh, don't be afraid if you go above 20% health. That's not a big issue. Not dying is usually more important issue. And yes, take your time. Don't stress too much about hitting him. If he's still really close to you, take your position. Then move to the side. Keep shooting. Like, it's not about how to get the best time in the world. How to win that competition. It's how to do it comfortably in like reasonable amount of time. Then that's our focus. And killing Wendigo's refreshing adrenaline was good as well. And you can see we, we have him quite nicely done. And even if I'm like at 30, 40 percent health, I'm still doing good damage on him. Not as great as I'm at exactly 20 percent, but look at that, it's working. He's taking a lot of damage. And I can hear Wendigo walking. One advantage of having slightly more health is that if he hits me occasionally, then I'm still good. And he's almost done. I just keep walking, just stay somewhere on the middle. That give yourself a room to do the turtle dance. That's the most important. Uh, keep keep whatever healing you want to keep you alive. Like I'm using for survival because it's triggering those steam packs and that's so helpful and we killed him not the fastest kill ever but i was talking way too much and one death that was a total surprise normally not happening but 
Yeah, that's that's a downside of bloody debil. It can happen. Oh, and he actually dropped a free star for us. Curious what will be the final reward after we loot that. And as final rewards, we got some cloaking starting meta, right? Like cursed pickaxe. Uh, nothing really exciting. Two standard stable fluxes, some steam packs. Yeah. Nothing truly exciting here, unfortunately, not at this time. And here you go, guys. That's my guide for the Colossus solo with a stealth build. Let me know what you think. Did you ever try to solo the Colossus so far? Or it will be your first time if you attempt it. And by the way, if you are looking for a heavy gunner guide, I was doing a lot of tests with a heavy gunner and just type on YouTube like heavy gunner Colossus or flamer Colossus test or something like that. There was a couple videos I was testing weapon, but quick tip, the flamer is the best for heavy gunner and Colossus solo. And now as always, thank you all for watching and see you guys in the next one.